Hi, it's Craig Metrics for VideoCelebritynews.com and I have got the honor and privilege of now giving you the uncut, extended, a little bit more detail, high definition interview with Lily Getz and Arnold Getz. So to see the intro, which I'm very proud of both of you, because we had a 20 minute intro, was worried a bit about the signal. The longest Please, intro I've yeah, ever done. Probably, yeah, probably the longest <laughs> intro you've ever done. Please go and watch that on facebook.com forward slash MetroWitch. Let's go straight into the questions, first setting the tone. Lily was discussing with us her experiences with the children and how the practicalities of those experiences and challenges have affected what she does now, which is almost like a calling and it affects businesses, but more importantly, it affects potentially every child in South Africa as a starting point, Africa and the globe. So Lily, let's flesh out now, you know, some of the technicalities on it, you know, what's the science behind what you research? What's the practical side? How's it all come together? So my question is, how's all your experiences come together now? So I want to make it very clear that I'm not the expert. I had an experience with my, my adoptive son. I've had an experience with my domestic son. And those components through information that was provided to me through experts has put together the whole um, platform on creating enrichment education in the less privileged areas. But the interesting thing I found that irrespective of dealing with the lower income or a middle upper class child, the bottom line is, is that we all in some ways the same. Yeah. And, you know, understanding basic concepts that works for all of us enables and enhance every single one of us. So one of the things that I found was that um, there's three different brain profiles, the auditory, the tactile, and the visual learner. Can I and, pause there? Mm -hmm. Guess what? I'm also learning out of this. <laughs> I'm stoked. Okay. I mean, I thought I knew most things at 52. You know, I kind of know a few things here and there. But now I'm going to have to listen intently. All right. Okay. I hope you can translate later. I'll, I'll draw my okay. picture. Okay. okay. But I'm serious now. This is great. I'm, I love to learn. So you've got um, all concentration now. Okay. So by understanding that we are all unique and that we don't you know, there's not one fix for everything or everyone. And just understanding, respecting that component, it's amazing how you can take three different brain profiles, accommodating it, and getting 100% engagement. That impact your end result. You see, so, so, okay, let me bring that to my thinking from a layman's point of view, and I relate to my child, is if I'm not aware of that, I've got a huge disadvantage. Mm. Right or wrong? If I wasn't aware about the three different profiles, then I would look at my child and I would judge that, that child in the wrong way. Not realizing that's one area, the other area is a little bit weak maybe, mm. but it's doable. Judging from your background and your perspective, yes, which may yes. not necessarily be the same personality as your child. Correct. Correct. And the thing is, we also judge everyone else by those, those same principles my perspective, the way that mm -hmm. I see the world, and not taking into account that your profile is entirely on the other side of that spectrum, and even though we see the same world, yes. we see it very Yeah, we see it very differently. Very different. So in, in my, my understanding is that practical example is when I, you ask people colors, uh, somebody will say, that's pitch black. And the other person says, no, but it's dark blue. Right. You know, and then you go, but hang on, okay, what is the color on the tag? You know, kind of you got to look at that and you go, and we're both wrong. It's actually dark grey. That thought has always tickled me pink. The blue shirt that you yeah, well, <laughs> is that's that a good blue, example. Is it's it the same blue example. that I see, or yes. how blue I mean, is that it, blue to you or to Lily? I mean, it's the same with coming in. Just part of my intro, being a business coach, an inspirational speaker, is like the happiness thing. I've often been asked, Craig, if you've been through these massive traumatic experiences, where I've been financially very wealthy, lost everything twice, had to restart. How do you stay sincerely, authentically happy? And then I go, but, but hang on, can't you see the happy side of it? And then they go, but what do you mean by that? And I say, but I start with counting my blessings. Mm. You know, so in layman's terms, that's gratitude. You know, attitude of gratitude, fine. But I sincerely start my morning with, I'm alive. Mm. And let's go to kids. It's the same thing if you judge your child by your vision. Let's say you're a depressed person. You see the negativity. You see him playing outside as unsafe. Because maybe that was a bad experience for you. Mm. Instead of understanding that your child should have a different viewpoint. The greatest cause of unhappiness mm. 
is judging happiness in other people by what you see on their outside. Uh, absolutely. The perception of happiness versus the reality is ask a so person, true. are you happy internally? And they, they stutter. Eh? They, they battle to get back to you on like, yes, I am. And then I say, but what makes you happy? Because that's quite cool. And they'll say, I'm in love. And I go, how's that feel? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, when last was in love? <laughs> And, and, that was, yeah, and then they go, but hang on, but you travel. You've got this glamorous lifestyle. I go, but hang on, if you travel as much, by the way, on the record, if you travel a lot, there's a, a sacrifice to be made. Of course. Yeah. You know? Of course. Practical example, you're away from your family. Mm. You know? You're away from your home. You're away from your home. Your own bed. Even though you love what you're doing, yeah, there's a sacrifice to be made. Mr. Arnold gets. I'm calling you Mr. How cool is that? It's nice. Uh, it's like, how's how it It's the first time. <laughs> Thank you for welcoming both of you into your home. And Arnold, uh, I said earlier on live, is that seriously, you, in my mind, you're a celebrity. Okay, I'm a fan of you as a person. I watched uh, you on Super Sport for many years. I used to be in my youth quite a good runner, by the way. You still are a good runner, so I'm quite envious. Let's talk about how your sports, commentating, the family... And then bring that to business. Because I've seen you in action. By the way, Arnold and I have officially worked together. We worked which with a client, incredible. which was amazing. It was eh? incredible. So I phoned him and said, look, please treat me as a client. <laughs> I would like to have you join us at, at an event. And we booked him for two events. And he, you've got glowing testimonials. Yeah. You know? And that was so cool for me too. Because you know, when you refer somebody, at, you know, it's well, your awesome. reputation's yeah, it's awesome when you know, the client says, and the people attending was phenomenal. But I want to share with our audience the power of what you did with the power of words. He got all of us to close our eyes, and then he did a walkthrough of like your race. I've never forgotten that. Eh? I've yeah, never so, forgotten that. So, but what's the technique around it for business people? Share that with so us. I do. I teach people to visualize. And, and visualization is a very important part. When you were preparing for this interview, you visualized it in your mind. You many, your many, many times. Yeah. Many so times. When, you, when people out there in the business world, when, when you go for a meeting, if you've got a meeting tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, you've run through what you expect is going to be on the agenda, and you think, well, when he says that, I'm going to say this, and then she's going to add that, and, and you visualize the whole thing. So... In, in my business uh, visualization exercise that I do, I make people run the Comrades Marathon in about seven And he and literally <laughs> does. I've actually, I'm serious. I've experienced this. Heart palpitations. I think even, I think some people might perspire. I have Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Okay. I've had people okay. afterwards say to me, I feel like I've, I'm, I'm done. I'm finished. I'm physically amazing. tired amazing. because I do it with audio. So I yes. make you wake up with the alarm clock, the heart beats, the... Mm. The, the buzz and the announcing at the start. Well, I'll tell you now, events. Arnold, yes, in 30 years that I've not only been presenting, but been at many, many, many presentations, I found it unique. It was refreshing, but it wasn't trickery. You know, most of these no, things I've been real. to, you know, it's all that's bells real. and whistles no, and no, glam and razzmatazz and, so you know what I mean, fireworks. I and, bring and that back to, I it. and I did it that day with you. Yeah. God forbid that it should happen to you, but what happens... Have you visualized what happens when some idiot runs up to your car with a 9 mil and hits on the window and says, get out of your yeah, car? Yeah, look, that's the other extreme of what could happen. But you've correct. got to visualize this because yeah, yeah. Lily referred to our armed robbery in this very home. Yes, I had visualized what I would do if that should happen. And I handled it almost exactly the way that I visualized it because I had thought about it before yeah. the time. If it, should, if it could happen or should happen, how would you approach you, it? Yes. Don't we drive like that? Shouldn't you be driving defensively all the time when you drive? Yeah. If you're riding on a, on a road that is narrow, if you're thinking cars coming from the front, if he swears, where am I going? What am I? You've you do. got you to do. be ahead of the yeah. game. And, and that visualization exercise is extremely powerful. I mean, I'll bring that into um, Dion Jaber, race car driver yeah. that I recently interviewed as well. And he also mm -hmm. said it's like, you know, the thrill for him was seeing everybody actually in the rearview mirror as he was rushing ahead. But at the same time, is for him to be world class in what he's doing, you would have to be able to know the next corner, the next probably three or four corners ahead. You're ahead of time. You know, and he said, if you think about the practicalities, going around a track, the track doesn't change per se, right? Mm -hmm. The corner's still there. The conditions do change. And you and your reactions change Absolutely. because you get tired. Absolutely, and that's the difference so, between winning and not. 
here's the beauty. A pilot of the, the new airplanes, the, the 737s and the 747s, told me years ago that these days they set the airspeed meter to be 10 to 12 to 15 seconds ahead of present time. Ama so that amazing they to know yeah, yeah. what's coming. So the predictability factor, you're right. I mean, how do you, uh, sp you spontaneously react? It's very difficult when you're traveling, let's say, 900 kilometers an hour. Yeah. That but makes sense to me. How nice to be ahead of the game, though. Yes. And that's what happens when you visualize something. Understood. Uh, Lily, visualization, business, um, your kids, how are you influencing kids? I want to understand, you mentioned nutrition earlier on, the 80-20 principle that you apply. Flesh out a little bit about that. You know, I'm also listening at this as being a dad. You know, can I apply some of this? When I go home, how should I apply some of it? So give us just some practical examples. Is, Craig, we did this, and this was the result. Uh, our audience would be, I think, very keen to know how's it you know, practically being applied and what was the end result. So we live in a society where food is very processed. And if you look on labels... You know, trying to understand how to read the labels, you know, um, I think that was one of the biggest components that enabled me to make informed decisions, that understanding that in the first five years, 70% of a child's brain capacity is developed. If you understand the brain, the brain needs good hydration and healthy fats. We're in a society... Okay, so a good hydration, that makes sense to me, and healthy fat. Now, that's why I pause, okay, because I think, I would probably not think fat per se. Okay, so healthy fat. I get it. Okay, very important Avo, to understand. No, Avo, no, I get it. Instance, olive oil, it's a... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and you clue that into the diet. Mm. Okay. So if you understand, and if you look at Mediterranean diets versus Western diets, you'll see that we don't have learning disabilities in ADHD and all those in your, in, your, in your Mediterranean diets because they always consume healthy fats, your raw nuts, olive oil, You're right. They, oily I mean, fish, so they oily have breakfast, meat. they have salads. Yes. In actual yes. fact, I'm reflecting on when I've traveled abroad. I go, wow, well, where's the breakfast? No, you know? This is breakfast. Yeah. Correct. Makes sense. But Once again, the there's logic to it. Makes the, sense. The interesting thing, though, is, is they always have a raw vegetable with their fats. Yeah. The okay. reason for that yes. is there's a live enzyme in your raw fruit and vegetables that's like a creepy crawly that cleans your gut. That. A creepy now, crawly. It is like a creepy crawly because Beautiful with analogy. all the processed foods that we are exposed to, we create plaque in our colon, and if we then consume food, your body cannot absorb the mac maximum nutrients in the body. So in the townships, I can't give my poor kids mm. fresh fruits and vegetables every day. Correct. So, I understand so that. So we make sure that um, we have a food state that we provide the kids. And, you know, by doing that, um, we are able to, to give kids exactly what the body needs in the first five years in order to excel so with Kina coming from a fast food diet high fizzy drinks not a lot of water by just changing his diet over he had real serious eczema issues within six weeks understanding proper omegas and when I say proper people don't understand the EPA versus the DHA and you get omegas and you get omegas so you know just like you get so like Homemade the, bread yeah. versus conventional yeah, bread it's... that has a shelf life. Um, you know, I think yeah, if it's got a shelf life of, let's say, three weeks, I mean, we never ask ourselves, how can that thing, yeah, how good is that? How can it last three exactly. weeks? Yeah. Because if you made, the, you know, you made it with almost the same ingredients but at home, yeah. how come within two of days you've got to eat it? You know, two days it well, starts going off. Well, because so the get... reality is that people live busy lives, they don't have time to bake bread every morning. So we as a society has also put pressure on the... The, the, the speed the, factor. Eat exactly. quick, convenient. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand why they do it. It, not, it doesn't necessarily add to our well-being. Um, so it's, it's, the bottom line for me is, is it, it was information that enabled me to make informed decisions. There's never right, there's never wrong. It's information that you need to see what works in your situation that has enabled me in order to do the work. 
when I did the, the pilot with my domestic son, I couldn't start mm. telling her what he should and should not be eating. I'm sure, but yeah, because yeah, you're you offering guidance versus... impossible. I get it. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. but what I did add onto his daily diet from a Monday to a Friday was a whole food smoothie that was made with 130 vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, and medicinal mm. food, which gave a child that was constantly sick for the first two years of his life, he was healthy and strong, for 12 month cycles, had growth spurts, never ill, but that glazed donut disappeared within the first six weeks. And it's, it's purely just understanding and going back yeah. to the basics yeah, of what we yeah. need without having to go extreme. So, so just from we, layman's coming to the, uh, Anna, you, can, you can help me there as mm. well, Anna, is that let's take our sport background. I know when I was competitive, okay, all the coaching I got was, you know, you can run fast, you've got the legs. But if you don't do the other things like sleep yeah. to re rebuild your immune Recovery. system, like proper deep sleep, like you go, but I don't need sleep. Yet you do need sleep. Yes. And then also from an eating point of view is exactly that is you cannot be at your top performance unless, the, you know, the computer terminology is called giga. Garbage in is garbage out. Yet our bodies, for some reason, we think garbage in means, oh no, I don't know, process, okay. it, process it into something else. So what you are, you're saying and the logic is there. I think we all actually know the, the logic. Is there are many ways to speed up the process of any child at any level. Mm -hmm. So it's not about whether you're rich or poor. Am I right? Can you just correct mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. And the access to this information is actually freely available. So you're not telling me there's a complete new methodology. It's revolutionary. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that to me is a very what, big give. Here's the principle yes. that went up for Lily and I when we saw Kina and the changes. Yeah. The brain works exactly like a computer. You made the analogy. And yeah. that really yeah. is the analogy. Is if that computer is properly fed, mm. the rest of it falls in line. Because that is what guides this mm. skin, blood, the skeleton, the exoskeleton, the muscles. Mm. It's all dependent on whether this is fed properly. If that is fed, and we think, yeah, like this I mean, is I think fed even properly. hydration, they, they, they say so it's, often, oh, you know, if your kid's got headaches, before you think it's a migraine or something else, water. just ask, water. How, how, how often have you drank today? Mm -hmm. Especially but when they're playing the whole day. That's one of the problems. Without any liquids. Our water in South Africa, people tell you it's good. Our water is not as good as what we told. In Johannesburg, is there, we lot, have, is there a lot of chemicals in the water? We I don't have know. Eight the times the allowed amount of chlorine okay, in the water so in our tank. I, 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 so go down to the swimming pool and drink the same thing. That's right. part of the problem. I'm right, convinced, right. Lily and I both have this pet theory. We base it on absolutely nothing but hearsay and how we feel about it. Yes, yes. But I'm convinced that a lot of the illnesses that we're experiencing today is because our water is not. Because water is for everybody. If I like me, even I, I love coffee, caffeine. Let's admit that. But I will always have coffee, and then I'll have a decent glass of water as a habit. But as you said, if the glass of water is full of chemicals, the coffee probably is probably safer because at least I know what's at in the coffee. It's, it's boiled, boiled yeah. you know, and I know what you know. I would use the best yeah. coffee available. So it makes sense that the, the chemicals. Could affect you. Very you much know. so. Okay, let's go now. I want to go on a higher level and inspire our audience. We set the tone on some of the challenges. I want to go into competing because you've had the privilege of competing. Comrades, let's talk about comrades. Bring it into presenting because you've done some other types of marathons in presenting. And as far as time, we've got about three or four more minutes before we wrap up. So, Arnold Gears, highlights. Oof. I know there are many, but Craig, I want to... I want to if my kids were sitting here, we were around a fireplace, and they said, Dad, yeah. come on, man, Dad, what was One, the highlight? 1992 Olympic Apart from Games. meeting Lily. And meeting you. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> 1992 <laughs> Olympic Games, without any doubt. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Because the Olympic Games, 1992 both, yes, Olympic yes. Games. Um, Why? Um, because I wasn't there, you see. So, so I want to be behind the scenes. Why was it such a hard More thing? than 30 years to make a comeback to the Olympic Games. And in my career, I never thought that I'd experience broadcasting the Olympic Games. So there I was. I mean, that is to anybody oh, in a career. Oh, that is, it is. It's a highlight. Yeah. So there I am in the in the studio in Barcelona with Martin Locke, an icon in South yes, African broadcasting. Yes. And uh, I get quite teary when I still think about this today, believe it mm. or not. And what is it now? 25 odd years later. And we expected South Africa to come out at the end of their alphabet because the teams come in 
according to the alphabet. So oh, okay. So you'll be sitting there going, so okay, I'm not up yet. <laughs> third up, yes. Afrique du Sud, because they go according oh, to French. Oh, Afrique du Sud. French. I get it. I get it. Yes. So Lockie and I look at each other like this. And I took his hand under the desk and he took mine and we both held on to the life because we were going to ball. <laughs> and we were blown away and, and we both said to each other, I cannot believe that we're finally competing at the Olympic Games. It was one. And then the other highlight that went with it at the Olympic Games was when Ilana May got her silver medal. And I, I couldn't help myself. When I got her in the, in the interview area, I bent over and I kissed her and I said, congratulations. And I still think to this day, Ilana May is sweat drying on my cheek while I was interviewing her. It's, a it's, like, it's, a, it's an highlight interesting thing. highlight. Honestly. I don't think anybody's had a highlight of an athlete being sweaty, <laughs> being a highlight. So I'm sure that's a first. Highlight for me, promise you. You know, and, and so looking at that, is, I mean, this is what I love about, let's say, sport. That people have never done sport. And I encourage, let's go back to the kids as well. Yeah, um, all parents, please get your kids into sport yeah, of some okay. type. And, you know, it can just be walking, by the way. Okay. A lot of people make the mistake. It doesn't necessarily have to be running. It doesn't right. matter. It doesn't matter what yeah. it is. As long as they're out there having fun. Fun. Correct. Having fun. And they don't have to be good at it. They don't have to be good at it. As long as they're out there having fun. Crossing the midline. Learning mm. to catch a ball. Learning the sportsmanship the of Walking competing. Walking barefoot. Eh? And, yeah. and it, it doesn't running matter Running barefoot. It is. I mean, it's, but it's Arnie, so let's be, did you, how often did you run barefoot? As a kid, always. No, I, I, mean, well, I, I didn't did. even know what running shoes were until yeah. I think standard nine or matric. Uh, you and know? I'm, do that. I'm like know. that today. I, I love taking off my shoes. First thing when I do when I get home is I, I want to feel the earth. You know? yeah. But you're talking about a super... It also is healthy for you. Knows, knows, yeah, yeah. Lily also. knows competing through and through. She's unbelievably competitive. So, you know. Okay, time-wise, we've got another two months to go. Let's mm. talk travels. Is that something we haven't mentioned in the Lily live interview, travel. by the way? Let's <laughs> talk travel. Because I've also traveled a lot. Uh, lessons learned in our travels. One place you'd love to go back and why? Travels wise. Uh, yeah, it's a. I've been privileged. I have family in Los Angeles, London, Denmark, Canada. Look, we're very close. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> we, we are best friends. Family. Okay, okay. okay. we can go anywhere. How cheap can we go now? <laughs> we can travel together. I mean, we are close we'll now. Make it Let's work. Face it, we can make it work. And what would be the highlight? Like, is that, you, you know, like I, I'll give you an example of Hawaii. Everybody expects me to want to go back to Hawaii. I have been there. I actually wouldn't want to go back there. I prefer Cape Town for my type of sport of windsurfing and the wind's stronger. You know, there's a whole lot of reasons. I'm not saying it's, a, it's, a, I'm not saying it's not a great place. It is great. But versus what I've experienced. Interestingly enough, I love to go back to New York. Mm. Not for too long. Yeah. Okay. For like, an, I was there four times. I'd like to go back for a week or two. Yeah. And I'd, I'd experience it now at this stage of my life differently. I don't see different things. I'd like to go back. So what, what, let's, let's answer the question. Where, what, what do you think? Where do you want to, look, he's here. Yeah, you know, you're going to put him on the spot. Okay. Um, he's what, can we save, what can we save towards? He's yeah. wallet, he, put it he, out he there. To be um, <laughs> put it see, out I, there. For me, it's not one specific place. I am a foodie. I like to always find out their traditions, their foods, the way they eat together, the cultures. I love sitting and just observing people and sometimes by just doing that you see like, the rich culture that you, you experience have in the culture every place yeah. you mm. go and I believe that that was the university of life that has given me that inner strength to just never give up because we're all so beautifully unique and we don't have to be the same in order to function together. You know, coming into a South African perspective, I always say this with anybody that I'm going to interview, and they like, I can see they're a little uncomfortable initially. And I talk like body language, like we're really close. For those people who can't say, I'm mean, we're close. <laughs> I mean, we are seriously close. But I can see that a little bit, you know, the body language. And then I go, when you travel, like I give an example, when I went to Hong Kong, Whoa. there's the ferry, right? Double ladies and gentlemen, I have never had so many ladies surrounding me simultaneously followed by the equal number of guys but i mean they are like this yeah. and the interesting thing is nobody feels awkward no mm. it's you know it almost feels like it's a professional gathering to transport now we've each got other a western across thing the about personal space is it is it a western thing yeah it is because western thing. you know i get it it's, by observing let's go back to the eating and the traveling you're so right mm. if you travel you experience the food there's there's a language in food mm. yes or no yeah mm. And not only that, you see how they eat their food and enjoy their food. Different to like guzzling it down. Mm. And then you appreciate we have all 
all got love for wine, olives, you know, olive oil, salads. Chocolate. Chocolates. <laughs> dark <laughs> chocolates. Dark chocolates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trifle. Maybe that's making me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> i tell you where um, I'd like to go back. Yes, only. Scotland. Scotland? I, I Why felt, Scotland? I, felt, I didn't I think you home. mentioned Scotland. No, I felt at home at Scotland. Scotland was like the free state. I am I think of myself as a freistater, a free boy. Yeah. And uh, Scotland was exactly like a free state. I felt at home. I've got Scott in me. My, my, my dad's yeah. um, mom's surname was young. So when I got to Scotland, I felt there was a part of me that felt at home. Home will always be South Africa. Always. Yes, yes. But there's a part of me that I thought when I got there, I can breathe here. And beautiful people. Just the most... Oh, they're friendly. Oh, I've never like, been there. So, like so, Freistart people. Yeah, they would they come, they would yeah. welcome me into their home. Yeah. And the way that they are, they warm and they... They, they, they gasfreiheit, by the way. I, I mean, in English and Afrikaans, gasfreiheit. It's a beautiful word. It's just such it? a beautiful <laughs> word. I can try and translate for international viewers. How about this? The mega, biggest, hugest, warmest hug you mm. could experience. Yeah. We kind of maybe get to gasfreiheit. Homeliness. Am I right? Homeliness. Homeliness. Yeah. Yeah. So my name is Craig Mitrich in the home of Lily Getz and Arnold Getz, two wonderful people that I'm proud to know. And I really appreciate your time. Thanks you guys are special. Me. You're close to my heart. And Thank thanks for giving up your personal time. And I'm going to share with a parting thought, a positive thought. That if you enjoy this message, share it with everybody. Mm. Okay? Please do. Share the love. Share the warmth. Share a hug. Share the food. <laughs> uh, share the food. Yeah. Get our kids out there doing healthy exercise. Remind our kids about sportsmanship when you compete. Like, you know, Arnold, you've competed. And bless them and love them. That's bless them, bless and, them, love them and love them. them. And, you know, I'd like to add to this. I need to add. I'm 52 today, 27th of July. Yeah, this. Happy and, birthday. yeah, happy birthday. And my daughter was the biggest birthday present I ever got. Because today, before I came through, da -da, running around, I got to tell her, that I love her. So my message to everybody, if you haven't told anybody after watching this that you love them, then frankly we failed. Am I right? I am quite right. So go out there, share the love. Craig Metrich for videocelebrinews.com. Bye. Bye.